Okay, we are back with the class story for Pine Martins, which is, as you know, the world's best teachers. And we are on a particularly disgusting teacher, which is Dr. Dredd. And why is he particularly gross, Ruth? Because he has the. Yeah. The chair of the thousand farts. It's not nice. Anyway, let's pick up where we left off, which was a new person has joined. One day, a boy arrived at Grunge Hill. Who would become the teacher's greatest foe? A boy so gruesome, he made Dr. Dredd look like a beautiful princess. You, would, you might like to think that that would be impossible, but you would be wrong. That is because you have not met Bog. Bog was a boy who looked like he'd risen from a swamp rather than being born. No one I knew it no one knew if Bog was his real name or not, but it was certainly apt. Like a bog, he was damp and muddy. He had worms in his pockets, twigs and leaves in his hair, and moss growing out of his ears. When the boy walked, there was a sound of squelching. Not only was he gruesome to look at, but Bog was bad too. Immediately he became known as the baddest boy in school. Bog never ever did his homework. His excuse? I ate it. Which was true. When the teacher became angry, Bog would snort with laughter. Snort, 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 snort. He swiped all the loo rolls from every toilet in the school. Then he wrapped the history teacher Mr. Obsolete in it while he was snoozing so he looked like an Egyptian mummy. Next he pinched books from the library and tore out all the pages to wipe his bottom even though he never he normally even wiped his bottom. He put the wiggliest waggliest worms inside the girls shoes when they were outside playing netball. When they slipped their feet back into them they were horrified. Ugh, yuck, Ugh, no! Sus. Put your bog, bog is there. And then bog, looking pretty revolting. He let the air out of all the footballs and replaced it with his own bottom burps, so every time someone kicked the ball, a stink came out. He snotted on the floor just outside the boys' toilets until he created a big pool. Then he hid behind the lockers and watched as boy after boy slipped over on their bottoms. He started a snowball flight with a mashed potato in the dinner hall. Bog made sure every kid got hit with a mashed ball right in their face. Spit, splat, spot. He nicked a pot of purple paint from the art room. He then painted his bottom purple, covered the walls in bum prints. He drooped a slippery, slappery, slappery slug down the back of the head boy's shirt. Yuck. He trickled some, sorry, he tricked some younger kids into swallowing live tadpoles by telling them they were yummy chocolate balls. I want my mum! Snort, snort, snort. You guys can see at the back. Not nice. However, Bog would say the, his absolute worst behaviour for his science lesson. He knew he'd met his match in Dr. Dredd and was hell-bent on getting the better of him. If the boy was warned not to spill the bubbling liquid he was holding as it would burn through the work dog, he would pour it straight onto it. Sizzle, sizzle. If Bog was ordered not to stick the iron filings to his face to, to create a comedy beard, he would do it anyway. Ta-da! If Bog was told never to mix two acids together as they would cause an explosion, the boy did just that. Kaboom! comedy beard. Mm -hmm. 
dog! Dredd barked one afternoon, spraying the entire class with his spittle. You are in deep, deep doo-doo. What have I done now, sir? replied Bob with a smirk. Stuck this piece of paper to my back. Dr. Dredd turned round. On his lab coat was the sign that read, Beware, toxic gas. All the rest of the children in the classroom sniggered nervously. Quiet! boomed the teacher. And there was quiet. Dread continued, Bog, I have the perfect punishment for you. One that is guaranteed to reduce even the naughtiest children to floods of tears. Bog, I command you, you must come and sit in my chair a thousand fucks. As the teacher rose from his chair, all eyes in the science room turned to the back of the class. To the surprise of all the kids, Bog had a big fat grin on his face. Gladly, sir, the boy replied brightly. With that, he hopped off his stool and skipped to the front. Before Dredd Dred could order the boy to sit, he had already bounced down onto the chair. Squelch. Mmm, sighed Bog. His nostril flared at to savour the scent. Like a cartoon child sniffing gravy in a television commercial. What a delicious aroma. Dr. Dredd looked lost. But boy, this is the dreaded chair of a thousand barks, he thundered. Bog's expression turned to one of quiet concentration. Sitting there quite happily in the chair of a thousand farts. Then a trumpet sound came from his bottom. <coughs> Make that a thousand and one, sir. The children sniggered. Silence, thundered Dredd. This only made them laugh some more. I said silence. It was too late. Dredd had lost control of his classroom. Get back to your places at once, at once he bellowed. The boy jumped up and with a spring in his step bounced back to his stool. The teacher slumped back down into his chair of a thousand and one farts, defeated. As if that wasn't bad enough, Dredd began choking. <coughs> he seized his neck with his hand. Yuck! 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 And wretched BOG! That stink bomb Bog had left was absolutely lethal. It was far worse than his own bottom bu bubbles. In comparison, they smelled like sweet perfume. Dring! The bell rang for the end of the lesson. As a still choking Dr. Dredd slid down to the floor. Lying there in a pool of his own spittle, the once feared teacher was determined to do something, anything, to get revenge. For your information, the sweetest perfumed is, in fact, my own scent. A whiff of Walliams, 99p a gallon. I think we'll leave it there to find out how he's going to wreak his revenge and see tomorrow. But that's part of his plotting.